Howdy. This is Glenn Zimmerman again. Uh, it's, uh, what is today? November 28th, Saturday. Still a year 2020. Great year 2020. Oh, we've had a lot of fun on 2020. Anyhow, it's getting close to the end. Uh, hopefully we'll make it. Today we're going to talk about water. Uh, first of all, I just want to say it. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and uh, hit the bell icon beside it. Uh, you'll get notified of when the uh, videos come about, and I'd appreciate that. And if you like the video, hit the like button and uh, give me a comment or two, and I'll be happy to read those and hopefully get back to you. Uh, I'm going to do a shout out today to uh, several people. Uh, first of all, I want to shout out to uh, my youngest grandson, Benji who I know watches this, uh, my oldest grandson, Zach, uh, my middle grandson, Anthony, uh, my oldest granddaughter, Tabitha, uh, my middle granddaughter, uh, Cassie, Cassidy, and my youngest one, uh, Grace. I am blessed with six beautiful, wonderful grandkids, three boys and three girls, and they all are all great. And, uh, I know a lot of them, several of them watch these videos, and uh, I appreciate that. Uh, at least I have a little bit of an audience. <laughs> okay, today we're talking about water. You know, uh, we take it for granted. You know, you turn on the faucet, and it's there. Uh, what else is there to say about it other than it's always there, except when it's not there. You turn on the faucet, and there's nothing comes out. Or you turn on the faucet, and it comes out brown. Or something. Or you turn on the faucet and it stinks. You know? So we gotta think a little bit about the future and uh, what happens when we don't have water or have good water. Uh, there's a lot of reasons we could lose our water. Uh, probably one of the biggest ones is electricity goes out and you think, well, what's that got to do with water? Well, most everybody's water is pumped. And uh, a lot of supply of towns, uh, they have a great big water tower. And uh, water comes from gravity, comes down through there, and comes down to your faucet. And you say, well, you know, that's that's gravity fed. Well, but how they get it up to the up to the tower, they pump it, and that takes electricity. And you slide to most the most of them, I'm sure, all have backup generators and whatever, and uh, that's good unless it's a long term thing and they can't uh, keep the generators running or for whatever reason, and. Uh, some places it comes from a well with a very small uh, reservoir or tank, and uh, so there's just a lot of reasons. Uh, we could have you could have a, a water main break. I remember uh, not that many years ago a water main broke in the neighborhood where I was at, and it took them a few days because they had to get a special part, and they had to have it flown in, brought in from out of state. Uh, so you just don't know. It could be a flood. Uh, the flood contaminates the water supply, and they say, you know, don't drink the water, even though there's water coming out of the faucet. Uh, you could have an earthquake, and that break up a lot of the water mains, and all of a sudden you don't have water. Uh, maybe you have most everything else. Uh, you could have something like a boil water alert. Uh, a couple years ago, a couple summers ago, a uh, reservoir where the water comes down to uh, the city of Salem, uh, they had all boil water or don't use the water alert because they had algae in the, in the water. It grew in the, in the lake, which held the, res, which was the reservoir for the water coming down. And uh, I can remember when that happened, they announced that uh, 30 miles away out here where I live, all of a sudden at Bymart, all the water was gone. All the bottled water, gallons of water, five gallons of water, everything was bought up, boom, gone. People came out all over the place and got water until they got the water supply set up uh, where they could supply them with water. Uh, and there's bound to be other reasons. You know, you could lose water. So now what? Okay, we established that we could lose water. Uh, if water could be turned off, whatever. Uh, probably one of the easiest things is to store some water. Uh, you know, how much water can you store? Well, I mean, it depends on the space you live in and how much water you'd want to store. And like everything else, canned goods or anything else, you want to rotate it through. And you want to use it and buy more to replace it. Uh, or put it in from your faucet, put it in containers and, and use that 
and rotate that so that you have water as a backup. Uh, you can filter the water, and we'll get into another video about filtering water and all the different things you can do to filter uh, different waters from rainwater uh, to waters from a stream or a lake or a river or whatever. Uh, and we'll talk about that at a later time. Now, examples of stored water, it's not going to be a very long video, but it's examples of stored water is, and I've got a few examples setting back here. Uh, you can see uh, I've got one. Uh, there's a five gallon jug of water, and then a one gallon, and then a bottle of water, and then there's a two and a half gallon brick of water. And so that's just different ways that you can have water and have stored. If you've got room for it to store it, that's a good thing to have. So if you obviously have some water right away. And along with that, you you know, this five gallon jug over here, uh, I don't have a uh, water thing dispenser for it. Plus it's heavy. Uh, the water is about, oh, they say a pint's a pound. And so eight pints, that's eight gallons. That's or eight pounds per gallon. So it's a little over eight gallons. Eight, pounds per gallon or it's five gallons there's 40 pounds of water there you got to pick up and hoist or dump over or whatever to get it out well i've got another thing that goes with that and that's this little gizmo here i picked this up at the store uh bottled water pump and you can see how it goes on top of the bottled water and uh, then you just pump the water out. So you don't have to pick the whole thing up and try and tip it and drain it and fill something up with it. So you can pump it out. It works real good. They're fairly inexpensive. And I re recommend if you have any kind of bottled water container like this five gallon one uh, back here. <laughs> kind of hard to do this by five gallon one. Or you like this one, I like it's showing a two and a half gallon uh, water jug. Uh, these pumps, Real inexpensive. Uh, get one, keep it handy, and so when you need it, you've got water. Another thing, another way is, like I say, I've got a five gallon, a one gallon, a two and a half gallon brick. Uh, I've got bottles of water. You know, we all buy bottles of water, and then I got a hundred gallons sitting back here. Say what? You don't see it, do you? A hundred gallons of water. Now that's five gallons in this thing, okay, and one gallon. Now, I've got a 100 gallons set back there. Well, not really. I've got a container for 100 gallons. Now, you know, in some places, some people have said, okay, well, there's going to be a water shortage or something, and you know it's coming, uh, and your water's still running, fill up your bathtub. Well, yeah, you can fill up your bathtub, but... Yeah, it's really not drinking water. I don't care if you wash it and sterilize it. It's still going to have bacteria and other things from when you take a shower or a bath in there. Not something I want to do. I don't want to, I don't want to drink straight out of a bathtub. A dog might like it. Uh, it'd be good for flushing the toilet or uh, some other things maybe, but not to just drink straight out of a bathtub. Unless, unless you have one of these. Now, this is one brand. It's uh, called Water Bob, uh, and what this is is a plastic uh, bag, so to speak, and uh, you you open it up and you put it in your bathtub, and then you just run the water into it, and it'll hold up to 100 gallons. Now, keep in mind, you know, a gallon weighs around eight, around eight pounds, so if you're going to do this, you don't want to be up on the third floor of an, an older apartment building and put 800 pounds of water in your bathtub. Uh, the structure might not take it. So that's just something to keep in consideration. But you're on the ground floor, uh, throw this in the bathtub, fill it up. You've got 100 gallons of water. It's got its own, it comes with its own pump, a little squeeze pump. It's not the most efficient thing, but you can squeeze out the water if you need it into your uh a bottle, your jug, whatever. So you're cooking utensil, whatever you're using. But you've got a hundred gallons sitting there. Now that's pretty good, I think. And this thing was like 35 bucks. I got it through Amazon. I'm not promoting Amazon. I'm not promoting this one. They make different ones, I believe. But you can go on Amazon and uh, look up Waterbob or just go waterbob.com and uh, 
see what they see if it comes straight from the manufacturer what it costs anyhow I, I think this is pretty handy I keep it on the back of the toilet so that if we run into this kind of situation it looks like we're going to be out of water for a while I'll fill up the bathtub and I'll have another hundred gallons of water without having to take up all kinds of space that's the big thing jugs of water take up a lot of space Plus, with this one, this water bob, uh, if you don't use it all or whatever, it's got to drain. You can drain it right there in the bathtub. You don't have to try and get it all out. Uh, it works pretty good that way. So, just a little comment on water. And if we happen to run, you run out of water or you run low on water or you know the water is going to be off for a while, what are some other sources of water in a real emergency? Well, you know, the back of your toilet in the toilet tank, unless you use some sort of blue thing or whatever in there. But if it's just water, that's water can be used, probably drank straight out, but most people would filter it. Another one is out of your hot water tank. If you've got an 80 gallon, 40 gallon, 50 gallon, 80 gallon, whatever gallon tank you've got, uh, you can drain the water out of it and it's usable. It's, it's just straight potable water or it's straight drinking water. So that's another source of water in an emergency. So you've got water around you. You just got to remember how to use it, how to get it. You know, the chances of you having to do this, probably pretty slim. Me, as you can tell, I prepare for the future and any kind of disaster, storms, whatever. Uh, so I have plenty of water, a uh, way to hold water. Uh, you know, I've got ways to cook uh, without electricity. We've had that, those videos before. But just be prepared. Think of the future. It's not that it's going to happen. It's not a matter if, but it's, just, it's a good chance of when it's going to happen. Uh, I can remember when we lived over in South Salem, uh, the power went off and was off for several days. And uh, I remember cooking outside on a tailgate of the pickup with my Coleman stove. And uh, people were walking down the street, come by and said, well, gee, I didn't even think about that. And they were walking several blocks away to go to a restaurant uh, or fast food. So, I mean, you just got to be prepared a little bit. It doesn't take a whole lot, but think of the future. Think of how you're going to get through these different things that may or may not come up. It's always best to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. You know, I know that sounds kind of trite. Along with that, uh, here as I end this video, I just want to say uh, I wish you all a, a Merry Christmas coming up and a Happy New Year. Uh, remember the reason for the season is Jesus. Uh, we're celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Uh, if you don't know him as your own personal Savior, uh, I hope you would. Uh, research it through the Bible and learn how to do that. Uh, make him your personal Savior. Uh, all else, no matter who the president is, no matter what's going on, no matter where the government locks us down or whatever, uh, we still have Jesus Christ, and that's where our faith should be that i want to say have a good weekend uh have a good time uh and i'll end it right here